I recently did a flooring project at my house and I thought I'd record the time lapse and do a voiceover of the process uh, and give any tips and tricks that I found on the way uh, for people who are doing this on their own. Um, the first thing, the most important thing is to get a nice flat uh, surface and I had wood subfloor that continued throughout these three rooms. Uh, and to remove the carpet, you kind of just cut it in strips and, and remove it however you can to get it out of your house. There's also tack strips you got to pry up with a pry bar. You can also see in the middle I'm doing uh, parquet. I was lucky that this parquet is glued to quarter inch plywood and then uh, that meant that it was an inch thick total before you hit subfloor. So I took my circular saw, cut strips in it, pried it up with a pry bar. And uh, then here you can see my, my brother-in-law is, is pulling out tons and tons of staples that were holding that plywood in. After that, we cleaned up the floor. I ran a level over it uh, just to make sure that it wasn't too much out of level according to the manufacturer's specifications on this Bruce hardwood that I bought. Uh, and then we laid down underlayment. Uh, we used Aqua Bar B. There's a few different kinds you can use. Like some, some are more like wax paper. Aqua Bar has a little bit of tar, I think, in it. Uh, some people even use roofing felt, um, but it's, it's to help a little bit with the subfloor and, and hardwood to keep it together. You also saw we put in that white strip. It's pine, just cheap pine wood. Uh, that is a cleat in the middle of the room that we use to start the flooring. If you start uh, from a wall and you're doing multiple rooms, you, you have a problem where there's transitions between rooms. You need to reverse directions of the wood or, or figure out how to match it up when you're coming from different parts of the room. So the easiest way to, to do that is to put a cleat in the middle and start from that direction and go out, which we're doing here. We're going towards the front of the house. And then later you're going to see you remove that, uh, that cleat, and then we can put in a, a spline and go the other direction. Um, once you start getting into the middle of a room, it, it's kind of a, a quick process. You can see we made a lot of progress there, and we'll go all the way as, as far as we can out uh, with that floor nailer, which we rented. It's a 15-gauge floor nailer from DeWalt. And now I'm putting that spline. Uh, I'm just wood gluing it in place. And then later uh, we came back and, and nailed the spline down. And then we started going the other direction, which you'll see in just a second. Uh, but it's essential to have a cleat nailer like this, a flooring cleat nailer. It's way easier than using a manual nailer. I couldn't even imagine hand nailing all these, but that's what they used to do a long time ago. Um, once we got all the boards that we could done uh, going towards the front of the house with that floor nailer, we, we uh, moved everything off, cleaned the floor in the other direction. And here I'll put the Aqua Barbie paper back down here. Um, and we just kind of staple that in place because it stays under the floor. And then we start going the other direction, uh, making it so that that floor is nice and straight across all the rooms. Uh, even if your rooms are a little bit out of square from each other, Starting in the middle makes it a little easier and it helps with the way that the floor expands because uh, it expands more towards the tongue side. So if you have the seam in the middle, then it will expand in both directions and it won't all expand out um, more on, on the tongue side of your flooring. Uh, so here I am going through as fast as I can. It's best to lay out two or three boxes worth of wood and then kind of pick and choose and make sure that your, your seams on the wood are all uh, pretty, pretty staggered so it looks random. Um, otherwise you have weird looking stair stepping patterns and your floor can, can come up a little more. Another important thing is to make sure that you have a three quarter inch expansion gap. At least that's what it is for this three quarter inch hardwood around all the uh, walls to allow the wood to expand and contract without bowing up or cupping. Um, and then once you get to the walls, you have to start using a, I used a 15 gauge finish nailer. Uh, and you can hide the nails in the tongue for the first couple rows, but then when your nailer can't angle at all against the wall, you have to nail right through the face. And that's what I'm doing here. You can see over in the, the far room. Uh, I'm also cutting around a vent, which I'll have a more up close shot of that in a second. Um, but you have, to, you have to nail right through the face of the wood, and you can fill that in with matching wood putty later. Or you can even leave it. Uh, the holes are pretty tiny with those 15 gauge nails, uh, as long as you use a pneumatic air nailer. Uh, so it's going to be important for you to have a, a compressor and a couple nail guns. I rented from Home Depot for this project. Um, I'm also doing some of the trim work here, putting things together, putting some base molding in, uh, cutting around the thresholds and things. That that finish work is kind of annoying and, and tedious, but the more the more time you spend on it, the nicer it looks. Uh, here you can see I'm using that the uh, finish nailer to put in these boards, and I have to switch to face nailing here. I'm also, I got lucky uh, that one side of the boards is lining up with that vent, the built-in vent, very closely. Uh, the other side I had to pull it off, I had to go downstairs to my table saw, 
and cut a strip into the wood and then use my compound miter saw to, uh, to cut it out so that there's kind of an L shape to the end of the wood. And here I am just doing the molding. Molding is pretty easy compared to uh, some of the other cuts that we do. Uh, but I choose to cope some of the corners where the, the walls are not really 90 degrees. It's a little easier for me just to cut it and cope it. Uh, and after the molding's done, we put things back together, put down a new uh, area rug, and, and that's about it. More information and links on my blog, which is in the description below on jeffgearling.com. Hope you enjoyed the video and have a wonderful day.